Um, we're here in the pink truck. It is Masters Week, Crystal Lamprick, and uh, we were just chatting a little bit about some of the food you've take, taken down this week at Augusta National. Can you take us through your power ranking of the sandwiches to this point? Yeah, so obviously I haven't had that much experience. It's my first Masters. Uh, so I've had the pimento cheese recently, uh, and I think it's amazing. I haven't had anything else. I will try all of it. But the pimento cheese is money. Uh, I really liked it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's funny. Is is the pimento cheese for years kind of had this? It was it was the boss here. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like there's been like backlash to the pimento cheese. There's like big egg salad push in the media center. But I love to hear that because it's my favorite as well. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I haven't tried enough. I'm definitely gonna try everything as much as I can this week. But uh, for now, that's definitely my number one. How's the week been? I mean, first Masters, getting a chance to be a part of a tournament. I can only imagine you've wanted to be a part of since you were a kid. Getting the pair. Getting the groupings today i mean you're getting to play with charles Schwartzel, which i know you're excited about how's the week been have you had any pinch me moments or a million pinch me moments about a million pinch me moments i think um i mean there's a reason why it's the masters is a reason why it's the most coolest uh, golf event in the world uh so yeah it's awesome uh, luckily i'm just an hour and a half down the road um so yeah it, it truly is an experience of a lifetime and i'm really enjoying it and it's just like just take it all in. You played a practice round with Jordan Speed today. I know you yes, were kind of talking about how cool that was, just kind of getting stories and obviously playing with the Masters champion. Did you, do you, like I always mentioned in amateur players playing with obviously veteran professionals. Are you asking them questions about the golf course? Are you asking them, where's the whole location going to be here on this day? Things like that. Or are you more just kind of enjoying the, the, the walk with them? Yeah, I think for me, it's I, I kind of like doing my own thing on the golf course. I, I play it differently than most guys. Right. I obviously, I hit certain tee shots, a little different lines on the, on, on the golf course. So I think I'm very stubborn in that way where I, I kind of know what I need to do and I'll play accordingly. But it was just nice to be out there with him and really just pick his brain in a couple thoughts and just really just pay attention to what he's doing and what he finds important, what holes he, he sees important um, in it. So uh, it was nice just to sit back and watch him a little bit. Um, he's a great player, a great person. It was really fun walking with him, and uh, I really had a blast with him. I, I heard a rumor you hit wedge into 11. Is this true? Um, yeah, I, I got a hold <laughs> of one. I got a hold of one and hit a wedge into 11. Uh, drove him, drove drove by him a good bit, and he was like, well, you do hit it far. But... I mean, so wait, so so you're six foot eight. Yes, sir. And, uh, and you know, we, we've seen professional golfers, the heights have, have risen over the years. I mean, you yep. think about – Late 90s, early 2000s, you know, yeah. you're thinking 5'10", 5'11", 6 foot. I remember 6'1", was a very tall professional golfer. I mean, you think about Nick Faldo in the in the late 80s and 90s. Yeah. I mean, he was towering over people at 6'3". <laughs> yeah. A, when did you start growing? When did you start to get this tall? And B, how has it been adjusting to your height as a golfer? Because I know you have, you have like, longer irons and things like that. So how has that adjustment been? And when did you start to become the tallest guy in the room? Yeah, so, I mean, I was never short. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I think I was 5'6 going into high school, 5'7. And then I grew a foot in, like, three years. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, so, as a golfer, I mean, that's hard to adjust to. It is stupid. Um, so I, I think I changed. had club changes, longer, high, like, lofts and lies changes. I think six times in three years. So wow. full three sets, six sets in three years, uh, constantly changes stuff. And my swing changed like weekly. It, it was really not a fun time to be a golfer. Um, I mean, six eights probably not, you're not meant to be playing golf, but it helps. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's been an adjustment, but you guys have been, has been great with that, helping out in South Africa, especially when I was younger. So um, it's been, you guys have made it a little easier. When you got into high school and you're five, six, were you a long hitter at that time? Or did, or did the length come with your growth? I think I was a little above average, but I was never never the longest guy there. Gotcha. Um, I think when that growth came, the arc came, and kind of a little bit of power. Uh, once I stopped, kind of stopped growing, I could kind of train a lot, and and I really harnessed the power and the, the the width I have on the golf swing, which was nice. And kind of now it's just being mobility and stability, and trying to just manage the speed. How was the crow's nest? Because I know you stayed there last night. Mm -hmm. You're six eight. The beds fit you. No. Were you hanging off the edge a bit? Not even close. Yeah. Okay. But you, did you get a good sleep? Was, or what was the deal? It was halfway up the Achilles. Um, and <laughs> just then the rest, all people problems, by the way. The rest was just off. Um, but yeah, I, I was. I didn't even attempt the shower. The shower head's like here, <laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna sit in the shower if I. People are go like, in. your your hair kind of smells, and you're like, yeah, I hadn't washed it in three days. It's yeah. just, just neck down. I actually, I had a shower in the locker room. Yeah, you were done. So I was like, I'm not gonna <laughs> do that. So it's it's been great. Um, the experience at the Open. At Rural Liverpool, I know you won the silver medal. What was that experience like, and how do you dive into that 
experience in a major championship and use it this week? Yeah, I think, I mean, for most people, I kind of took two massive lessons from the Open. Obviously, leading on the Thursday, yeah. tied for the lead on the Thursday. It was awesome. It was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and, 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 at the and, moment. And you, time. you know that golf course relatively well. I mean, I, I, you'd, you'd seen it prior to that week at no, all? No, I haven't, you actually. Hadn't? Okay. No, I always, I've, I've played a lot of Lynx golf, which okay. I think it helped um, for my preparation. But for me, it was partially just... I led, and the one lesson from that is I feel like my good golf's good enough to hang with anyone in the world, and that's a great kind of momentum thing for me as an amateur going into professional golf and just trusting that I'm, I guess I'm good enough. And then the second lesson was obviously with that, all the dramatic stuff happening off the golf course, my phone exploding, yep. um, and all that media stuff. So for me, it was, the biggest lesson was kind of how to act and how to deal with myself for that transition from leading in a, in a major uh, to the next day going out and kind of wanting to do the same thing. Obviously, I didn't play as great, but I snuck into the cut. Um, but, yeah, I think that's the biggest lesson of kind of how to zone in and stay in the zone in that moment. Does that, does that make you – I mean, I can only imagine it makes you hungrier. You know, you get in those moments and you're like, I want to feel that again. I want to taste that again. Like, that is what I, I'm, I'm preparing for and practicing for, and that's why I play these amateur events and collegiate events and things like that. You get that moment, and then you leave the open – is it a dip? Like, are you? Is the energy dipped because you want to get back to something like that? Obviously, playing some of the best players in the world. Yeah, I think I think my expectations and myself have changed after that tournament. I was just like, okay, I'll, I need to get there. I need to get. I need to win everything. Um, <laughs> and it's obviously a little hard on yourself, but um, no, for me, it's just like as every young amateur and young professional. Once you get that taste and you get the feeling of, oh my goodness, this is what real pressure feels like. And I guess your comfort zone changes over the years. I think. Uh, I think I, I, all the guys, even Tiger Woods at a certain time, felt like, oh, he was a little bit out of his comfort totally. zone. But tw 10 majors down the line, he, he was so comfortable Sunday afternoon. So I think for me, it's just getting more of that experience and, and really learning from it as much as I can. And hopefully 10 years down the road, I'll, I'll be comfortable on Sunday. How do you stay comfortable this week? You know, you get to Thursday. How do you keep yourself even keel and do like you did it at the Open on Thursday? How do you how do you kind of stay in that mindset? I think it's just limited uh, my expectations. Okay. Um, what, are, what are the expectations? There's none. Uh, for me, it's really just an experience uh, and learn from it as much as I can. Uh, take it in and really just and just enjoy it. I've got nothing to lose. So I'm going to go out there and play my game, be aggressive, and, and really just have fun with it. Do you have a favorite tee shot around Augusta National or a hole that once you played it, you went, oh, this one's for me? The hard thing is, there's 18 really good holes. Out yeah, there. yeah. Well, that's a good. That's a good and a bad. Someone thing, right? asked me. Jordan asked me this morning. He was like, "What's your favorite favorite hole out here?" And I was like, "I don't have one. I really <laughs> don't." There, I step on the first uh, every uh, every tee out there. It's just like, oh my goodness, this hole's perfect. This hole's great. Um, so I mean, yeah, all 18 holes is, is my, is well, my favorite and, and what's, what's cool about Augusta National, it is a place you can hit driver all over the ballpark if you want to. I know we were talking before we got going, you said maybe 10, maybe 13, you're not going to hit driver outside of that. You can kind of send it wherever you want. I mean, that's, that's probably got to play into your hands a bit. Yeah. I think Augusta National, I think has a lot of emphasis on wedges and putting and chipping around the greens. I think it's a fair golf course off the tee. If you're driving it well, you're getting, put yourself in a lot of good positions. So I think it's not that penal off the tee um and then if you get in the pine straw you can kind of figure your way out of there um so yeah i think if i if i drive it really well i, I think this golf course uh, would suit me very well do you have some family here i mean do you have a lot of people here with you who's who's here who's caddying like who do you have with you yeah so my mom and dad uh flew in two days ago all the way from south africa nice. i've been uh so they're staying here for a month actually all the way to my graduation next cool. next month so that and I have a couple of uh, really good friends from back home in South Africa that also flew flew for, over for this. So I've got a couple of South African people yelling uh, Afrikaans words <laughs> in the golf course. I know exactly who they are when they say that. So you're like, those are my guys. I'm yeah, like, those are my them. guys. So um, no, it's it's really ha it's it's awesome to have them here. Um, it's a little bit of peace of home um, right out there on the fairways. So it's it makes me a little comfortable. It's uh, what's the plan post graduation? Are you going to turn pro this summer? What are you what are you planning on doing? Yeah, that's definitely the goal. Um, obviously with PGA Tour, you and a lot of, all, all that stuff. Stuff. um there's a lot up in the air but i that's my kind of my goal i've i've set my expectations to four years of college and really enjoy that and grow and become a bit best player i can be when i'm ready to turn pro and i think i think the time is right and, and after college what was the transition from south africa to georgia what's that transition like for you was it shocking was it different what, what was like one of the things when you first came here you're like oh wow this is a different world it was um it was a little tough to get used to culture wise i think that it took me a while to really find my feet but once i did it was kind of normal i've luckily been privileged enough to travel quite a bit right uh, vr national golf squad taking us all over the world so 
the traveling side of it, it's, it's been pretty easy. Um, but obviously making a, a new home so across the pond, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty, it's different. It was. Can we talk about your bag setup and, yeah, and what you got do. in the bag? Um, what irons are you playing? I mean, do, do you have anything unique or different this week that you don't typically have in the bag? Um, yeah. So normally the main difference for me, normally I, I switch between a, a two, a two iron, a driving iron and a three wood. Okay. So this, this week I'll be using three wood cause it just works off the tee. And luckily the par fives aren't stupidly long. So I don't have to hit that two iron and three iron into the greens, uh, which helps out a little bit. So, but yeah, besides that, um, I've got the less balanced T grind, uh, lob wedge in this nice. week. That's really firm and fast around the green. So get a little bit underneath it helps a lot um but yeah besides that it's it's uh, same old set um i've been using the blueprint tees as soon as they came out nice. they're amazing i love them so much um, combo set or you just blueprint tee through blueprint the bag? tee right throughout the bag okay. i was kind of pushing the combo set at from the word go and then i put a five iron four iron in my hand and i was like this is really forgiving <laughs> um and it's funny i i um i used the normal blueprints before and my spin rate's gone down ball flight's been better um uh, to be fair it's probably the most forgiving blades i've ever played in my wow. life yeah it's, it's funny we, we we had we had a uh, we had an amateur in here earlier and he was kind of chatting the same thing so i mean i feel like he kind of thinks the same way as you think about the the tees it seems like they're like really up a lot of people's alley they uh they suit me perfectly i i really love them uh when i had a bad shot it's all me it's not them i know that for sure um if you're low amateur come sunday and you're in butler cabin i mean is, is it like have you pictured this moment in your life yet or are you try not to go there I mean, it's hard. You human. It's hard not to. Yeah. Uh, obviously, deep down, you have some expectations. You have those dreams, and they're always going to be in the back of your mind. Uh, but yeah, for me, it, it'll be a great privilege, great honor to be there on Sunday and and be the low am. But I mean, there's a lot of golf that I need to be played before Sunday. So for for me, I don't, I don't even want to go there. Um, I'm worried about one tee shot right now, and that's the first tee <laughs> shot on Thursday. On Thursday. And then I'll take it from there, one shot at a time. So um, that's kind of my goal. Um, when you saw the groupings come out, how pumped were you about? Charles being in your group yeah it's kind of funny I, obviously at the, at the open i was i was i'm really really close to louis and uh we got paired there too so no we, we were chatting after alfred collins and the home language a bunch that'll be great playing with him too and it really is special so uh it's really nice playing with South africans in this big moment um par three contest you doing that yes sir uh do you have any do you have anything special planned for that is anybody different going to carry your bag or any anybody you're you're paired with or grouped with there yeah so the, the grouping is kind of the special part for sure um so i got a call about a, a, about three weeks ago before the masters um and mr gary player said i would love to play no with you way. and i was like it'll be a great honor had you uh, talked to him or met him before i've met him a couple times um and he's great obviously he's a legend of our of our country's golf um and he really is someone to to kind of take so much information from right. he's done it he's one of the best um so yeah it'll be great to play with him and then i'm playing with eric van roy and so all south african group uh we'll have a blast for sure it's a, this is this is like south africa in in uh in augusta this week for you i mean you got your friends and family here you're getting to play with mr schwartzel obviously and then obviously the gary uh gary pairing with eric will be a lot of fun it's really nice it kind of sets me at ease and kind of makes me feel like i'm home home soil and it's really really great i mean I kind of am on home soil. I'm in Georgia. I was going to so. say, you, this is like your two it worlds. It really is the uh, best of two worlds. <laughs> this is like the perfect situation. We'll be rooting you on. It'll be fun to watch. Awesome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.